you're gathering information to get your building permit for your project, well, that's what this module is going to help you with, is knowing the building code, the National Building Code of Canada. So let's get into some of the objectives that we're going to cover, and that's basically an overview of the National Building Code of Canada and some of the provincial codes and how flat wall ICFs are specified. We'll also go through the Fox Block Structural Engineering Design Guide, help you a little bit with that. And some of the key elements we'll learn is the code compliance, ICFs in the building code, the ICF engineering, residential applicability limits, National Building Code of Canada Engineering, the Structural Design Guide, plan notes and details, on-site inspections, and specifications. So let's start with the building code or the product code compliance. So all products need to comply with the building code and that's um, evaluated and monitored by third-party testing laboratories. Um, our manufacturing meets the standards for flat wall ICFs per the ASTM 2634 and the Canada ULC S717.1. The manufacturing is certified and evaluated for quality control and installation must follow Fox Blocks recommendations and instructions. So in the green box you'll see there Fox Blocks are approved for construction below grade, above grade, and any building type. So this is a foundation. We do many foundations. And then here's a above grade residential. We do a lot of that as well. And then we start getting into the mid-rise, the hotels, things like that. There's a three-story one here. And here is a 22-story building high-rise that we've done. And that's all structural Fox Blocks. So we've done all these different types and we're approved for all these different types. So now ICF in the building code, Fox Blocks meets all requirements of the National Building Code of Canada per this third party compliance report. And that's the CCRR 1010. That's what you see right here. And that is available on our website. And we, in that you'll find the compliance for fire testing, uh, the thermal barrier requirements, that's typically half inch gypsum board, uh, compliance, per flat wall ICF standards, the fire resistant rating for assemblies up to four hours. We can do that with Fox Blocks. Finishes and fasteners, the product manufacturing quality control. So all that type of testing is in there. Um, the Fox Blocks are a stay in place flat wall ICF system and that's what you have to look for in the, the National Building Code. So part nine, housing and small buildings is where you're gonna find this. The ICF Engineering, um, National Building Code of Canada design parameters, that's one spot that you'll find that they have charts right in the building code for engineering. Uh, Fox Block Structural Engineering Design Guide is, has an engineer stamp for every province and that is available on our website as well. And additional ICF Engineering is available at the PCA, that's Portland Cement Association 100 Prescriptive Design of Exterior Concrete Walls and they have insulated concrete forms listed in there as well. The CSA A23.3, that's the design of concrete structures. Then you'll find an ACI 318, thin wall concrete design, ACI 332, that's residential code requirements for structural concrete, and Fox Blocks technical bulletins on our website. Those will all help you with anything that you might need to get your building permit. Residential design parameters per the National Building Code of Canada. The design parameters, that's basically your limitations for using the charts in the National Building Code. Now you can exceed these limitations it, with engineering, but without engineering, you can follow these charts right in the building code and it lists what you need as a minimum. So the, the plan dimensions maximum is 80 foot by 40 foot. And the clear span for floors would be 24 foot, roof clear span 40 foot, foundation wall height 12 foot, uh, two stories above grade, and that then you could have a basement under that as well. So you could have a basement, main floor, second floor. And each floor height would be 10 foot for above grade. And then the design limitations for snow lows, wind pressure, and seismic design. That's all the limitations to use the charts in the National Building Code. So now all of the climatic and seismic data to use for the design calculations are in the tables in Appendix C in the National Building Code. So there you're gonna find your snow load, wind pressure, seismic data, heating degree days, 
and equivalent fluid density of soil as for backfill. And all of that is in Appendix C of the National Building Code. So now for foundation walls, you can do them using the charts in the National Building Code. And those walls would have to be laterally supported at the top. That means you have a floor system attached at the top. So it's connected at the top and the bottom. So now you know when you put backfill against it, that top floor load is actually supporting the top of the wall from moving. Uh, then you have reinforcement. There's a chart to show reinforcement. And they show one 10 amp bar placed 12 inches from top of wall. That's something you have to do. And then a 10 amp bar horizontally, it's 16 inch on center, placed on the inside face of the wall. And the reason it's the inside face of the wall is that's your tension side. And we're gonna cover that in another section. Cold joints, that would be cold joints within a foundation wall. So now, in most cases, foundation walls will not have a cold joint. And the cold joint between the foundation wall and the main floor wall, that is not what this is talking about. This is if you have a cold joint in that foundation wall. And then you would need 15 amp bars, 16 inch on center, and embedded 12 inches on both sides of the joint. That's to give a very solid connection. So now foundation walls again, the vertical rebar tables, and that will cover um, 140 millimeter, 190, and 240. Basically six inch, eight inch, and 10 inch foundation walls. That's all covered in the National Building Code. And that's where you'll find it. Here's the heights of wall, and then the backfill heights that you'll have, and then the rebar that you'll be required for that, and that's in the code. So for above grade walls, um, thickness shall not be less than six inch. You can do four inch, but you'd need engineering for that. Maximum floor to floor height is 10 foot. Again, you can go higher than that with engineering. Constant wall thickness for entire height. So you can't all of a sudden get slender and then go thick again. It has to be a constant wall thickness. And then maximum two stories for one family. That's two stories plus a basement. For above grade walls, horizontal, um, you, you need to have one 10 amp bar 12 inches on top, same as the foundation. And then 10 amp bars at 24 inch on center. Now you could go 16 inch on center to make it easier for yourself because you're exceeding the code. This is the code minimum, right? Re uh, reinforcement placed in center of wall section. So now you're going right dead center of the wall. That's because you don't know what side the tension is on. We'll cover that in another section. So for vertical reinforcement, 10 amp bars at 16 inch on center placed in center of wall. Vertical, vertical bars placed within 24 inches of each side of an opening. Now there, there's charts there that can get a little bit further apart. You just follow the engineering charts, okay, for that. And now let's go into the Fox block structural engineering. This is a, a book that's available on our website and it has an engineer stamp for each province. And this will cover all of the material specifications below and above grade reinforcement tables, the shear wall tables, concentrated point load tables, openings and lintel tables, design details, and the National Building Code of Canada climatic and seismic data. That's all in this book. And you can download this out of our resource center on our website. So Foxbox, more of the structural engineering here uh, these are the below grade tables and these charts in this table very easy to follow you'll see that you'll have the concrete core sizes the different sizes the block it covers all sizes for for below grade you won't have four inch but you'll have um, six eight ten for sure and then the backfill fluid density we need to find that in the back of the book and seismic zone wind pressure wall heights backfill heights that's all in this chart, and then it shows you what rebar you require and where to put it. Now, this is above grade tables. They work almost identical. It's just that they have a different um, design in them because you don't have backfill pressure and you don't know what side the tension side is on. So here, we're, again, we're gonna put rebar in the center of the wall and just follow this table. It's all listed in there, and the cover sheet for this section will show where to put rebar and things like that. ICF designs, this is um, the applicability limits again in part nine. 
Some provinces require registered engineering. I know in my province they do, but in a lot of provinces they don't. You can just follow the National Billing Code. Um, in my province, our soils are so bad that they require engineering for all concrete jobs. Doesn't matter if it's ICF or conventional. So you just need to know, follow your building department and make sure you know what the requirement is before you submit for your building permit. Um, this is design drawing requirements. Now, we can go, you can look through all of this here, but we can go onto our website and download all the different types of details that might apply to our plan and, uh, and attach those with the plan to get our permit. Because these will be FoxLog specific and they will show you exactly how it's going to be put together and it will help you to achieve your building permit to get the building permit. So you can uh, use the engineering tables we just talked about Foxbox details like this you can find on caddetails.com. Just type in Foxbox, you'll find them. Bim Smith for 3D ones and the Foxbox detail libraries. And lintel schedules, bearing attachment details, Florida roof connections, and specifications for concrete and rebar. That's all available here and you can find that on our website as well. On-site inspections that you might need. Uh, this is uh, province by province. You're going to have to look and see what your province requires, but that could be an um, inspection for footings. Um, that's to confirm the dowels that you put in and that they're put in properly. The drainage management system. Now, if you don't have your drainage um, done properly, you'll have a leak in your basement. You need drainage to carry the water away, otherwise the water is going to come up and you will have a leak. doesn't matter what kind of wall you have. ICF or conventional, you need to take care of the water below your foundation in order to have a dry foundation. Now below and above grade walls prior to concrete placement, uh, that inspector is going to look for rebar placement on that. And then below grade waterproofing and damp proofing and possibly protection of your waterproofing and damp proofing. And you need that inspection prior to backfill in a lot of cases. Not all cases, but in a lot of cases you do. So now Foxblock specifications, they're available on our website as well, and this is typically for commercial work. And that will be CSI specification um, 031119. And then we have technical performance data sheets as well that you can submit, and that's gonna help you. And that's again available on our resource page on our website. So in summary, the Fox blocks are code compliant for all building applications for Canada codes. Below grade foundation walls, above grade foundation walls, load bearing and shear walls, interior party, demising walls, firewalls, we can do all of that. Commercial applications beyond the residential code limits are designed as thin wall reinforced concrete as per CSA A23.3, design of concrete structures. So there are no code or design limitations on building with Fox blocks. You've got to remember that. So complete the questions in this module and proceed to the next module whenever you're ready. Remember, once you've registered, you can log out and log back in anytime to continue learning. And any questions regarding this material or for additional assistance, please call number attached here.